should pregnant women take DHA or supplemental DHA and EPA recommended for others? Sure. Um, DHA and uh, EPA are um, 20 and 22 carbon long um, omega-3 fatty acids. Uh, Plant-sourced omega-3 fatty acids are primarily 18 carbon long that our body then has to take and elongate into the 20 and 22 carbon varieties. We also know that uh, DHA and EPA are critically important for the developing fetus and its, its, its uh, neurologic system, including the brain. Arguably, if a woman were uh, eating a healthy plant-based diet uh, that was low in fat and didn't have a lot of added um, uh, either animal or plant fats um, and had adequate intakes of, of uh, the um, plant-sourced omega-3s, her body would then be able to take those omega-3s and elongate them in an efficient enough fashion that her fetus would develop normally. And I, I personally know um, a number of vegan women who have uh, successfully um, uh, gone through conception and uh, um, uh, pregnancy and even lactation while being strict vegans. However, why take the chance? Um, a little margin, I mean, a, a cushion of safety is always um, uh, a good thing. I'm not saying that, you know, I subscribe to the more is always better, but I'm saying that with the baby, it's just like taking a multivitamin um, uh, during pregnancy to make sure you're getting adequate levels of B vitamins, which are important for uh, warding off neural tube defects. I think it's a good idea for a pregnant woman to take some plant sourced, not uh, uh, animal source like the krill and fish oils because they come with a host of toxins and uh, biological uh, uh, poisons that are not good for a baby's brain. But I think it probably is a good idea uh, to uh, to take some supplemental DH, uh, DHA EPA just to make sure she's got that margin of safety. Now, I'm going to uh, end that by saying I am not an obstetrician or a pediatrician, and um, uh, if there are uh, plant-based uh, obstetricians and pediatricians out there who want to weigh in on that uh, subject, um, I, I would wholeheartedly encourage them to do that. Um, but just in my opinion, it's uh, it's probably a good thing to just take a little extra to make sure that um, uh, the developing baby has all it needs. What's wrong with yogurt? Don't we need probiotics? <laughs> oh, uh, well, first of all, let's, let's make it clear there are two different kinds of yogurt. There's dairy-based yogurt, which is made from milk, which, again, mammalian milk should not be consumed by, number one, a different species, number two, by adults. And there are all the problems associated, the inflammation, the uh, carcinogenesis, um, and so forth associated with um, uh, uh, dairy-based yogurt uh, formulations. So let's just throw that right out the window now, okay? And God help anybody who's underneath that window. Um, so you can have plant-based yogurts. There's uh, soy yogurts. There are, um, uh, there are other types of, of plant-based yogurt as well. And these yogurts are made by fermenting um, uh, a, uh, a protein source with bacteria that cause it to uh, uh, form this uh, gooey, creamy um, uh, substance. It's an option. Is it necessary? No. And you say, well, what about probiotics? Well, first of all, 10 years ago, what nobody talked about probiotics. Okay, because, and that was primarily because we didn't have the appreciation of the importance of our gut microbiome that we do now. Well, every time, you know, we learn something new about the body, there's 
going to come crawling out of the woodwork, a bunch of people who want to try and make money off of it. And studies have shown that consuming probiotics can transiently alter the bacterial makeup of a person's colon, but that what's most important for promoting the healthiest gut microbiome and keeping it well established are not probiotics, which will cause a brief uh, increase in certain bacterial species, but they end up being crowded out and flushed out of the colon uh, over uh, a period of a few days. What's most important is actually prebiotics. That is feeding the gut microbiome the compounds it, these bacteria need to grow, to uh, flourish, and to establish themselves. Well, what are prebiotics? Plant fibers. Um, but it's not, and, and, but it's the plant fibers that come from whole plant foods. So it's all of the uh, soluble and insoluble fib uh, fibers that are found in a whole range of foods. And again, the greater the variety of plant foods you're eating, the better and healthier your microbiome is. Uh, and so don't think you can just, you know, take a glass of Metamucil and you're going to get there. That's not going to get you where you need to be. You've got to eat whole plant foods in uh, a great variety. And that's really what's going to help establish uh, the healthiest uh, gut microbiome. And it is much more important uh, than prebiotics. You, you, if you're eating a healthy, very plant, whole food plant-based diet, you, you don't need the prebiotics. They're not going to hurt you, but you don't need them. I mean, now, the only case where someone might need a prebiotic, so they might prove themselves useful, is let's say someone uh, gets some kind of illness and they have to take antibiotics, which will uh, um, uh, kill off certain bacteria in the colon. Well, then at that point, ingesting some prebiotics may give the uh, remnant bacteria in the colon a leg up on uh, repopulating itself with healthy strains. Uh, but that's the only scenario where I would think that they would be uh, required. Otherwise, you don't really need them. But again, it doesn't hurt. But uh, people shouldn't feel like, I've got to take uh, 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 probiotics. No, you don't. What you have to do is eat a uh, healthy, whole food, varied, plant-based diet. A recent study claimed vegans have more bone fractures. Is this true? Again, my penalty flags flying on the field. No. Um, first, of all, first of all, for reasons that I, we can't go into, the data in that uh, so-called study was suspect. It was uh, not calculated properly. And there are other additional, uh, and, and the population they looked at was also somewhat suspect. Um, all the studies that have looked at healthy, um, whole food eating um, uh, plant-based populations show that not only are there not increased um, uh, risk of fracture, but that uh, people who are plant-based eating a healthy plant-based diet have an actually a lower risk for uh, uh, a bone fracture. Because one of the things that significantly weakens our bones over our lifetime is the ingestion of animal protein because it causes calcium loss in the urine, which over time leads to osteoporosis. So again, that was just, I mean, ridiculous nonsense. And, and no, just um, people can throw that crap right out the window. And again, my apologies to anybody standing underneath the window. 